Hey, Tasha here with Emerge Sales Training. And today I want to share with you two questions that are game changers in your network marketing business. And thanks so much for tuning in today. Um, I will say often a lot, it's not what you tell people, it's what you ask them. But not all questions are created equal. Uh, there is such a thing as bad questions that bother people and good questions that are helpful for people. And when we think about asking questions as either working in helping them get their product or helping our team members, we think of influence. And when we ask questions, what we really want to be able to do is help the other person come up with the best answer that works for them to engage them in their thought process. So here are two questions that I've recently learned uh, from leaders that have abilities that are superior to mine. And they've blown my mind and they've really, really helped me in really both areas from a sales and enrollment perspective and also from a leadership perspective. So I'm going to give you the two questions real quick. Uh, first question is, how will reaching this goal impact your overall quality of life? So I'm going to give uh, props to my business coach, Heather, for this one. And then the second one is, how will you hold yourself accountable to these action items? And so props on this one goes to Karen Hammond, who is one of our leadership coaches here. So let me go ahead and go through why these questions are awesome, when to use them, and what to do if you don't get a great response. So this first question uh, how will reaching this goal impact your overall quality of life? So when do you talk about this? Well, this will go after any time in, in either your sales conversation or a business overview or recruiting conversation when you might ask them at the beginning, tell me more about your goals. Like, what? tell me about your health goals, maybe in a sales situation, or tell me about your income goals right? That's a good start. And then we say, you know, tell me more, what else, what else, what else? But follow that up with this question. How will reaching this goal impact your overall quality of life? Here's why this is important. People don't care about the goal necessarily. They care about how the goal will impact their ability to have a better life. So if someone says, well, here's my health challenge. I want to be able to sleep better. Well, how will this impact your overall quality of life. And then you get into the real stuff. And this is to help them to understand why this is important. It's also to really demonstrate that we care. I did this in a complimentary coaching call that I did really recently. And I was just meeting with this most amazing, amazing person. And so we talked a little bit about her income goals and her goals for her business. And then I said, I asked this question, how will reaching this goal impact your overall quality of life? And you can see her eyes light up and her starting to talk about how it would mean she would get to go visit her grandchildren. Are you kidding me right now? Like that's the good stuff. It's not about, oh, I'm gonna make, I don't even remember, right? Like $5,000 a month, that's so great. Like people are not motivated by money, they're motivated by what the money can buy them, which is typically relationships or status or freedom. And so we need to ask that follow-up question. How will reaching this goal impact your overall quality of life? Now, if they aren't sure, all you have to do is play it cool. Okay, no problem. I just wanted to ask because I really care about getting to know you and then just move on to the next section. You'll be good. All right, then the second question is how you hold yourself accountable. And when you use this is at the end of a coaching call. So your team member says, okay, these are my commitments. This is what I'm going to do to reach my goals in the next couple weeks or whatever. And then you can follow up this question. How will you hold yourself accountable as goal? Why this question is awesome is because people want accountability and they want autonomy. And the big mistake that we make as leaders, and I've made this mistake over time, which is why I don't even ask this. Like when I coach someone, I tell them I don't do accountability because I don't want to babysit them, right? I'm trying to develop leaders. And this question is just so much better because what we do as leaders sometimes is we'll say something like, how can I hold you accountable? Well, then it just positions us as the nag. And they'll say something like, well, check in with me or whatever. And then you'll check in with them and they won't do it, right? Because they don't like the nagging. So people want accountability and they want autonomy. And so when we turn this question around, it puts, puts the ball in their court. We can say, how, you know, how are you going to hold yourself accountable? Some people I've heard say, um, well, I just need to write it in my planner. That'll be enough. And then they do it. 
Some people will say, I need to send you a message when I've done it. Some people need to say, I need to post it in a Facebook group or I'm not going to have that community accountability. And I just think this is so awesome. And another really key insight on this is that what works for one person from accountability does not work for another. And sometimes we get caught up in, okay, I want everyone to fill out this accountability tracker and send it to me Friday afternoon. Now, if you need that communication, that's one thing. But if you're just trying to get at holding them accountable, well, what if they hate trackers? And if they hate that, and you tell them you need to send it, then it's gonna break down some of your trust. But if you turned it around and said, what do you need to do to hold yourself accountable to these goals? And they say, you know what, I need to send this to you, then it's gonna be a completely different relationship. And I think that's really, really, really cool. If you ask this question and they don't know, so so you say, what do you need to do to hold yourself accountable? Say, I don't know. Then you can say what other people have said and then give them a few options and have them choose one. And that way they're owning the decision because unfortunately or fortunately, we're not their bosses. We can't fire them. We, we can't do that. What we have to do is we have to build their autonomy and their independence by helping them to, um, helping them to get stronger, right? So if you, we're a personal trainer, you would have someone go to a gym, you would do the same exercises over and over to build their strength. And that's what this question does. Now, if you want to learn more about asking better questions, we do have a questions course. It's only $17. Uh, it is geared towards the sales process, but they can, they can adjust to leadership as well. Um, but it's a short course. It's awesome. It'll help you to really understand the different kind of questions that you can ask to people. So just click on the link above there and uh, you can register for that and start watching that right away if you want to continue this conversation. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this video and have a great